Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 24. In this video, we're going to look at some divisibility rules. So our lesson objective for today is just to learn how to determine if a number is divisible by, then we have the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. So essentially it's the numbers 2 through 12. Now we're going to hold off on this number 7 and this number 11 until the very end because the divisibility rules for 7 and 11 are a bit more time consuming. I'm not going to say they're complex, but they're more time consuming than the other ones. So what does it mean when we say a number is divisible by another? So a number is divisible by another if the result has no remainder. So for example, 25 is divisible by 5. So 25 is divisible by 5 because 25 divided by 5 is 5 and it does not have a remainder. 30 is divisible by 3 because 30 divided by 3 is 10 with no remainder. If I look at something like 19 divided by 4, is 19 divisible by 4? Well, no, it's not. If I take 19 and I divide it by 4, I'm going to get 4 with a remainder of 3. So because there's a remainder involved, 19 is not divisible by 4. So when we have a number that is divisible by another, the result has no remainder. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the divisibility rules. I'm going to do 2 through 12, and we're going to exclude 7 and 11 until the very, very end. The ones 2 through 12, excluding 7 and 11, are very, very easy. You just need to write them down as you go. You will memorize them as you practice, and then eventually you won't need your paper anymore. So let's begin by looking at divisibility by 2. So a number is divisible by 2 if it is even. So we've briefly kind of talked about even numbers, and I kind of gave you the definition of even and said that a number is even if it's divisible by 2. Well, yeah, that's true. But kind of the shortcut is the final digit is a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. That's the way you can tell if something's going to be even and therefore divisible by 2. Now, if you looked at, let's say, the first 10 numbers... you can see the pattern. If you look at 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, those are the even numbers here. The other numbers, and let me change the color here, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, those are called odd numbers. So if a number is not even, it's odd. So they alternate. You go even, then odd, then even, then odd, then even, then odd. And that's just how it goes forever and ever and ever. So again, for divisibility by 2, you're looking at the final digit of the number. If it's a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, then it is automatically divisible by 2. It is an even number. So for divisibility by 3, the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. And if you don't get it at first, the first time you add the digits, you say, well, I don't know if this is divisible by 3. You can keep adding digits. You can keep going until you find out, hey, is this number divisible by 3? For divisibility by 4, the final two digits of the number forms a number that is divisible by 4. For divisibility by 5, the final digit is a 0 or a 5. For divisibility by 6, the number is divisible by both 2 and 3. So for divisibility by 8, it's similar to the rule that we had for divisibility by 4. So the final three digits of the number forms a number that is divisible by 8. Then for 9, it's similar to the rule for 3. So the sum of its digits is divisible by 9. And just like we saw with 3, when we're checking for divisibility by 9, if we form the sum of the digits and we don't recognize whether that sum is divisible by 9, we can take that sum and we can sum the digits again. For divisibility by 10, the number ends with a 0. And then finally, for divisibility by 12, the number is divisible by both 3 and 4. All right, so let's get some practice going. So we want to determine whether each number is divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So I'm starting with the number 232. So is it divisible by 2? Is it divisible by 2? Well, a number is divisible by 2 if it's even. And again, I told you that a number is even if the final digit is a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. The final digit here is a 2. So this number is even. So yes, it's going to be divisible by 2. Now let's check divisibility by 3. 
So a number is divisible by three if the sum of its digits is divisible by three. So what I would do is I would go through and say, okay, what is two plus three plus two? Two plus three is five, five plus two is seven. So you would then ask yourself, if I divide seven by three, would I have a remainder? And yes, you would. Seven divided by three is two with a remainder of one. Two with a remainder of one. So seven is not divisible by three, and therefore 232 is not divisible by three. What about four? So a number is divisible by four if the final two digits of the number forms a number that is divisible by four. So just look at the final two digits of the number. Just think about only those two digits. So the number 32, is that divisible by four? Well, yes it is. 32 divided by four is eight with no remainder. So this would be a yes. Then what about five? A number is divisible by five if the final digit is a zero or a five. So if I look at the final digit here, it's a two. That's not a zero and it's not a five. So the answer would be no. And then lastly, we want to ask, is it divisible by six? Well, a number is divisible by six if it's divisible by both two and three. So 232 we found earlier is divisible by two, but it's not divisible by three. So if it's not divisible by both two and three, it will not be divisible by six. So this is a no. Okay, for the next one, we're looking at the number 93. And again, we're doing two, three, four, five, and six. So for the number two, remember, we're looking at, is it an even number? Meaning, does it end in zero, two, four, six, or eight? This ends in a three. 93 is an odd number, it's not even. It doesn't end again in a zero, a two, a four, a six, or an eight. So it's not going to be divisible by two. This is a no. What about three? Well, to be divisible by three, the sum of the digits for the number would be divisible by three. So you do nine plus three, that's 12. 12 divided by three is four with no remainder. So therefore, because the sum of the digits, which is 12, is divisible by three, the number 93 is divisible by three. So this is gonna be a yes. This is a yes. Now next, is this number divisible by four? Now generally, you're gonna ask, okay, the final two digits of the number forms a number that is divisible by four. But we only have a two digit number here. So we have to think about another trick. Now one of the things I'm gonna teach you, and you'll understand why in the next lesson, four is built from two times two. So for that reason, if a number is not divisible by two, if a number is not even, it will not be divisible by four automatically. So we don't need to go through and say, okay, 93 divided by four, is there gonna be a remainder? 93 is an odd number. There is no odd number that's going to be divisible by four. And so this is going to be no. Next, we look at five. So for a number to be divisible by five, the final digit is a zero or a five. Here, our final digit is a three. So this is going to be a no. And then the last one, is this number divisible by six? A number is divisible by six if it's divisible by both two and three. So we got a yes on three, but a no on two. So it's not gonna be divisible by six, so no. All right, let's look at one final problem, and then we'll look at some practice problems that deal with eight, nine, 10, and 12. So what about 300? So again, we're working with, two, three, four, five, and six. So is it divisible by two? Well, yes it is. When your final digit is a zero, it tells you it's an even number. And for divisibility by two, we need the number to be even. What about three? Well, you can see that that's yes right away because if you sum the digits here, three plus zero plus zero is three. Three divided by three is one, no remainder. So that's a yes as well. What about four? You look at the final two digits of this number. Now, you might find it odd. You see zero, zero. You say, well, that's, what number does that form? It just forms zero. So basically you're saying, is zero divisible by four? Well, yes, because zero divided by anything other than zero is zero with no remainder. 
So this is zero, no remainder. So because it doesn't have a remainder, you can say that yes, 300 is divisible by four. So this is a yes. Then what about five? Again, for five, we're looking at the final digit of the number. And in this case, it is a zero. So yes, if a number is divisible by five, it's gonna have a final digit of a zero or a five. So this is a yes as well. And then lastly for six, we know that that's a yes because we just look at what we've already done for two and three. Those are both a yes, so this is a yes. right? For a number to be divisible by six, it needs to be divisible by both two and three. And in this case, it is. Okay, now we're gonna look at eight, nine, 10, and 12. So to determine whether each number is divisible by eight, nine, 10, or 12. All right, so we have 918. Again, we're working with eight, nine, 10, and the number 12. So the rule for eight is that the final three digits of the number forms a number that's divisible by eight. Now, that's not really gonna help us here because we have a three digit number. One of the things you can kind of think about is eight is built out of two times two times two. So if it's not an even number, which in this case it is, so if you had something like 917, you could just say no, right? That's an odd number, it's not even, it's not divisible by two, so you could just say no right off the bat. But in this case, we do have an even number, so we really just have to check it by doing a long division. So we'd say 918, divided by eight, eight goes into nine once, one times eight is eight, subtract you get one, bring this down, eight goes into 11 once, one times eight is eight, subtract and you get three, bring down the eight, eight goes into 38 how many times? Now here's where you could stop because eight times five is 40, that's too big, eight times four is 32. So you know you're gonna have a remainder, right? Four times eight is 32, I get a remainder of six. So it didn't divide evenly meaning we had a remainder. So we know that the answer here is just gonna be no. So this is new. No. What about divisibility by nine? Well, that's a similar rule to three. The sum of the numbers digits will be divisible by nine. So we just sum this, nine plus one is 10, 10 plus eight is 18. Think about 18 divided by nine, that's two with no remainder. So this one's gonna be yes. This will be yes. Then what about 10? So the rule for 10 is you look at the final digit and if it's a zero, it's going to be divisible by 10. If it's anything else, it's not. So because this is an eight for the final digit, so the answer is no. So what about 12? Well, for 12, we look at the fact that it needs to be divisible by both three and four. Okay, three and four. So we don't know if it's divisible by four yet because we haven't checked that. But for three, if something's divisible by nine, it's automatically divisible by three because nine is three times three. So we got a yes on the divisibility by three. Is it divisible by four? Look at the last two digits of this number. If I had 18 divided by four, would I get a remainder? Well, yes, I would. 18 divided by four is four with a remainder of two. All right, if I did 18, divided by four, four goes into 18 four times, four times four is 16, subtracting you get two. So four with a remainder of two, so this one is going to be no. And again, although it's divisible by three, it's not divisible by four, and so because it fails that one, it's not divisible by 12. Okay, what about 16,299? So again, let's look at eight, nine, 10, and 12. So the number is not even. The final digit is a nine. So it's not an even number. It needs to end in a zero, a two, a four, a six, or an eight to be even. So because it's not an even number, it's not divisible by two, so there's no way it's gonna be divisible by eight. So this is a no. What about the number nine? Well, for nine, we sum the digits. So we have one plus six, that's seven. 7 plus 2 is 9, 9 plus 9 is 18, 18 plus 9 is 27. So 27 divided by 9 is 3 with no remainder. This is a yes. What about 10? A number is divisible by 10 if the final digit is a 0. In this case, our final digit is a 9, so we're going to put a no there. A number is divisible by 12 if the number is divisible by 4 and 3. 
although it would be divisible by 3. Again, if a number is divisible by 9, it's automatically divisible by 3. It's not going to be divisible by 4. And the reason for that is it's an odd number, right? If it's not divisible by 2, it can't be divisible by 4. So this is an automatic no. All right, we'll look at one last one, and then we're going to talk about the rules for 7 and 11. So here we have 10,800. Let me kind of change the colors up. So we have 8, 9, 10, and 12. So for 8, again, we look to see, first and foremost, is it even? And yes, it is, right? It ends in a 0. And then we can look at the final three digits of the number. That's 800. Is 800 divisible by 8? Well, yes, it is. And that should be easy for you because 800 divided by 8, you can pretty much do that in your head. That's 100. Right, because 100 times 8 would be 800. So we know that this would be a yes. Next, we look at 9. So we would add here 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 8 is 9, plus 0 plus 0 is still 9. Now, 9 divided by 9 is 1 with no remainder. So this would be a yes as well. Then what about 10? Look at the final digit of the number, and it's a 0. So this is yes. And then what about 12? Well, we know it's divisible by 3. If a number is divisible by 9, it's automatically divisible by 3. So that part checks out. But what about 4? The final two digits of the number would form the number 0. 0 divided by 4 would be 0 with no remainder. So it's divisible by 4. So the answer here would be yes. Because it's divisible by both 3 and 4, it is going to be divisible by 12. OK, so what about the rules for 7 and 11? So I'm going to tell you the rules for 7 and 11, a lot of teachers just skip them over because they can be a little confusing. But in all reality, if you practice them, just like anything else, it's not that hard. So for 7, there's some steps you need to follow. The first thing you're going to do is remove the last digit from the number. Then you're going to take the number you removed and double it, subtract this away from the shortened original number. And I put here that we may need to repeat the process a few times. Sometimes you have a large number and you'll do it once or twice and you, you just don't know if it's divisible by 7 yet. So you just keep going until you have a single number left and you can say, okay, is it 7? Or you can have a multi-digit number like 14 and say, okay, well, 14, I know that's divisible by 7. All right, so let's practice. Determine if each number is divisible by 7. All right, so we have 26,411. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the last digit from the number. So basically just think about it as I'm cutting this number off and I'm turning the number into 2,641. That's my new number. Now the number that I cut off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double it, meaning I'm just going to multiply it by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. And then I'm going to subtract it away from this shortened number. So I'm going to subtract away 2. Now what am I going to get? Well, I need to borrow here. 11 minus 2 is 9. Bring down the 3, bring down the 6, bring down the 2. Does anybody know if 2,639 is divisible by 7? I sure don't. So you would continue, right? You would just do the same thing. So now I'm going to go, okay, 2,639, cut off the last digit, bring that guy over here. I have 263 now as my shortened number, and I'm going to double 9. So I multiply it by 2. 9 times 2 is 18. So 9 times 2 equals 18. And I'm going to subtract that away from 263. So I'll borrow here. This becomes 5. This becomes 13. 13 minus 8 is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. Bring down the 2. I have 245. I still don't know if this is divisible by 7, so I'm going to continue. So I'm going to bring this over here. I have 245, cut off the last digit, that's a 5, and so that leaves me with a shortened number of 24, double 5, 5 times 2 is 10, subtract that away from 24, and I get 14. So now I do have a number and I know if it's divisible by 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2 with no remainder. So after going through this process, I can see that my original number which is 26,411 is in fact divisible by 7. Okay, let's try another one. We have 6,480. And essentially what we want to do here, again, is just chop off the final digit. So I'm going to write this number as 648. 
and then I take that final digit and I double it. So what happens if I take zero and I multiply it by two? I get zero. So I can say 648 minus zero if I wanted to, but we all know that's 648. So I continue, I chop off the final digit of the number again, and I'll have 64. And I'll take this over here and I'll say, what is eight times two? Right, you're gonna double it. Eight times two is 16, and we'll subtract that away. 14 minus six is eight, five minus one is four. So I have 48 now, and I can already tell that 48 is not divisible by seven. And I know that through my multiplication tables. If I think about 48 divided by seven equals what, work backwards. What times seven equals 48? Well, I know that six times seven is 42. Seven times seven is 49, that's too big. So I don't have a whole number here that's gonna work, and so I'm gonna have a remainder, right? So I know that 48 is not divisible by seven, and therefore this number 6,480 is not gonna be divisible by seven as well. Okay, so let's look at the rule for 11 now. 11 is less complicated, but it's still more complicated than the rules that we looked at earlier. So the first thing you do is you find the sum of the digits in the odd places and subtract away the sum of the digits in the even places. And I'll show you how to do that in the example. Then the next thing is that if the result is a zero or a number that is divisible by 11, then the original number is divisible by 11. So let's look at some examples. Determine if each number is divisible by 11. So what you'll do, if you get this on a test, just go through starting at the leftmost number and say, okay, this is position one, then two, then three, then four, then five. So remember the difference between odd and even. An odd number would be something like one, three, five, seven, nine, so on and so forth. An even number, is a number that ends with zero, two, four, six, or eight. So two, four, and then if we had a, a sixth digit, an eighth digit, something like that, we'd have even. So I wanna start by just forming the sum of the digits in the odd places. So nine plus seven plus zero. So nine plus seven plus zero, then I'm gonna subtract away the sum of the digits that are in the even places. So we'd have zero and then two. So zero plus two is two, zero plus two. So nine plus seven plus zero is 16. Zero plus two is two. 16 minus two is 14. 14 is not divisible by 11. 14 divided by 11 is one with a remainder of three. So this number 90,720 is not divisible by 11. All right, let's look at 361,152. And again, we're gonna start by labeling it. So the leftmost digit of the number, we're gonna say that's in position one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six. And what we're doing is we're gonna sum the digits in the odd places. So the digits that's in the position of one, three, and five. So three plus one plus five. Three plus one plus five. And it's just a coincidence that the digits that's in the fifth position happens to be a five. I know that can be confusing, but that's a coincidence. Now we're gonna subtract away the sum of the digits that are in the even places. So in this position of two, four, and six. So six is the number in the second position, plus one, which is the number in the fourth position, plus two, which is the number in the sixth position. So again, six plus one plus two. So three plus one is four, four plus five is nine. Subtracting away, six plus one is seven, seven plus two is nine as well. So when we do this subtraction, we get zero. Now remember, we said that it would be divisible by 11 if the result was a zero or divisible by 11. Here we got a result of zero. So that tells me that this number, 361,152, is in fact divisible by 11. 